Hello and welcome to my channel. In this channel, we explain various nursing concepts in a simple form for better and easy understanding. These videos could be used by both LPN and RN students as well as nurses who are trying to refresh their basic concepts. My name is Nas Mosh. In this video, we're going to start talking about our cancers that affect the GI system. We're going to talk about colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, as well as liver cancer. So let's start with colorectal cancer. So screening for this cancer starts at the age of 50 and it's completed every 10 years. If nothing shows up initially on the colonoscopy, they keep it at 10 years. But if the patient has a polyp removal, they are required to have more frequent colonoscopies or they could choose to even have a sigmoidoscopy every five years instead. So technically it's like if you get a polyp removal, you're of a high risk. So we're going to monitor you more frequently. And the screening tool for colorectal cancers include the fecal occult blood test and a colonoscopy. So most of the time you'll see like a community health question. They'll ask you how often they do the fecal occult is annually. So risk factors for colorectal cancer include smoking, what kind of diet you're taking, right? Being physically inactive, genetics, as well as people of an older age. Signs and symptoms of this include rectal breathing. That's why we do the fecal occult. And then there's also changes in bowel patterns, color, and consistency. So your stool changes. Something is wrong with your moving of your bowels. How do we diagnose this? If we get a positive fecal occult blood test, that is a diagnostic tool. We can also do our imaging, our CT scan, MRI, colonoscopy, as well as our, our golden standard, which is a biopsy. Treatment for this includes chemotherapy, radiation, as well as surgery. So with correct cancer, somebody could end up with complications like a uh, complete intestinal block obstruction or colorectal tumor. So if you have a blockage, so, you know, depending on how high it is, go back to our endocrine, our GI uh, med search videos, the higher it is, you know, and the lower it is, the types of stool somebody will be getting. So let's talk about pancreatic cancer. With pancreatic cancer, it has a very high motility rate because it's not really detected early. So any type of cancer that has a high motility rate, it has a poor prognosis, like a poor diagnosis for it to be early diagnosed, right? So pancreatic carcinoma has a vague manifestation and is usually diagnosed in late stages after liver and gallbladder involvement. So with this, you'll end up with an involvement of the apparatus or the GI system, other parts of the GI system, and that makes it a very bad or a high motility rate for it. So risk factors for this include some diseases like chronic pancreatitis, cirrhosis, diabetes mellitus, metastatics, from other cancers like breast, lung, kidney, as well as skin, being of older age, as well as genetics. With our diagnostics, we can do our biopsy, our golden standard. With imaging, we can do like endoscopy. We can do abdominal paracentitis. That's when they use a needle to insert in your abdomen and they remove some fluid to check what that fluid you're getting when you have ascites. And as well as we can check for tumor markers. Nursing care for this patient. So always manage pain. It's always a priority intervention with all our cancer patients. We we'll monitor for blood glucose and administer insulin as prescribed. Jejunostomy in the duodenum, that's when they'll place an ostomy, is often placed to provide enteral feeding and we increase the feeding as tolerated and we monitor for frequency of diarrhea. With frequency of diarrhea indicates that the patient is now tolerating this food. They're having like a dumping syndrome. So treatment for this include, of course, chemotherapy. We can have some surgical interventions, palliative care to relieve and prevent symptoms. Because remember, this has a poor diagnosis, like it's not very well, has a high motility rate. So we will send these patients to palliative care to manage their pain. Some complications of this include fistulas, which is the breaking down of the site of the anastomosis, right? Anastomosis, sorry about that. Peritonitis, which is internal leakage of corrosive pancreatic fluid, as well as thromboembolism, which is due to a hypercoagulable state caused by necrotic products. Let's talk about liver cancer. So 
Risk factors for this include older age cirrhosis being of a male as well as tobacco use. Diagnostic, of course, our biopsy. Labs will be checking for our AST, albumin, B when will always be elevated. We'll have some imaging CD scan. And nursing care for this patient, we will always, since we are talking about our liver, we'll have this patient on bleeding precautions. We'll administer blood products to replace any blood volume loss and as well as clotting factors. We'll encourage this patient to eat small meals. We'll measure the abdominal girth because of ascites to see if the, there's more buildup of fluid because whenever you have that buildup of fluid, it will affect your respiratory. Your lungs, your diaphragm are not going to expand well, right? So we need to know if this patient is gaining more fluid in their abdominal. We assess for adequate nutrition. We encourage these patients to avoid you know, alcohol use because alcohol is one of the reasons why people end up with liver cirrhosis, right? And we also restrict fluids in patients with ascites. Ascites is that abdominal retaining of fluid. You will see the stomach moving like, you know, it's like water in the stomach because we don't want them to continue retaining this fluid, increasing the volume of this fluid. And as I told you, the more fluid they retain, the higher the chance they're getting respiratory involvement and their respiratory gets compromised because it's not opening the lungs are not opening effectively well how do you treat this patient we could give them medications like targeted therapy hepatic arterial infusion we could do a hepatic artery embolization we can do ablation procedures, right? With hepatic artery embolism, this is where we monitor bleeds after the procedure. And with ablation procedures, we monitor for hypothermia, bile leakage, hemorrhage, and urine of myoglobinuria. We can also do uh, surgical procedures as treatment. Some complications that could arise from this type of cancer include acute live rejection after a liver transplant because patients could end up getting a liver transplant. And with liver transplant, there is a criteria the patient has to meet to get it. So you could end up with an acute liver rejection. And this has to be resolved as fast as possible to prevent the demise of the patient. And you could also have liver or kidney failure due to impaired blood flow to the kidneys. That's it for our GI. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. See you on the next one. Bye.